How's it going, BRM fans? Today, we're gonna be checking out the brand new iDrive 8.5. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, Beam Review, what we do here is teach you everything there is to know about BMWs. We also do some really cool hidden tips, tricks, and features reviews. So if that's something that you want to learn about, subscribe to this channel because we put out content every single week. So ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be breaking down the brand new iDrive 8.5. If you don't already know, BMW did do a recent upgrade on their iDrive system. Now what iDrive means if you're brand new to BMWs is simply their other way of saying operating system. So yes, BMW did upgrade their operating system from iDrive 8 to 8.5 and there were some major tweaks and changes that did take place. So definitely stay tuned for the whole video if you wanna learn about all those different changes and every little thing that you need to know about this brand new operating system. Also, if you guys wanted to get some really cool accessories for your BMW, check out the link right down below. We do have a partnership with Amazon and we do help sell BMW accessories. So if you do have a BMW and you're looking to get, say for example, some car mats or some accessories, license plate frames, or even some attire, definitely check out the link right down below at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So yes, everyone, we are looking at the brand new iDrive 8.5. And so this is gonna be our home screen. So if you were to hit home, of course, we're gonna be at this home screen here. Now the couple of different changes that did take place here is mainly gonna be this widget box. Before the iDrive system did have their widgets in columns going across the street, but now they did make it much more easy. So check this out, you can change whatever widget you want here. There's a couple different ways that you can adjust this box. So the different ways that you can move around this box is you can go up and down. You can also go side to side and then see different parts of whatever that widget is showing. So let's walk through this step by step and go through every little thing you need to know about. First off, our first widget is gonna be personal assistant. Now, personally speaking, I probably wouldn't be using this one because yes, you can press talk to me right here and then talk to your personal assistant to control features within the vehicle. But of course, we do also have the voice command button right here, which is much more easy to use. So if I swipe down, the next one we're gonna see is our media, whatever is playing on the radio. This will also work for Apple CarPlay, FM radio, satellite radio, whatever music or media is playing through the system, you're gonna see that here. Right down here, this is gonna give our status of our phone. If my phone was connected, you would see how much charge that the phone has and many other details. If I go to the next one, we also have the media box again, but right down here, if you are someone who uses the BMW maps a whole lot, this might be very, very convenient for you because you can literally just search wherever you wanna go. You also have some shortcuts here that you could use. And let's not forget that for this widget box here, not only can you go up and down, but you can also go side to side. So depending on whichever widget you're on, you could go left and right on that too to see even more features and settings that you can choose from. But yes, moving right along. Also, I will say with the new iDrive 8.5 system that the whole system is much more smoother. It does feel quite similar to an iPhone now, which is really nice. It's not as choppy as it was before. The next up, we do have a compass. And depending on if you were using the BMW maps or not, could also get this to show your route previews as well. But yes, if I swipe left and right, of course, we can see more information going across the screen. This one is also a good one because you can see your map here. Of course, you're gonna be wondering why we would have two maps, but this whole side of the screen you can change as well, and we'll be getting to that shortly. Next up, we can see some things about vehicle status. Nothing too, too fancy here, but if I swipe over, this one is also gonna be another one of my favorite ones because this is also gonna be where we would see our trip computer. Now, yes, you can have your trip computer show right here on the main screen as well. What I personally like to do is keep my media here and have my trip computer here. So this one is gonna be a good one. You can also reset your trip computer right from here as well. So it makes resetting your trip computer manually much more easy. One thing that I do like to do is that there is a drop down menu here and then you do have different types of options that you can choose from. So what I do like to do is set this till since last charge. But basically if I have this set to the last charge or set to refueling, then what will happen is that this trip computer will reset all by itself. So you never have to hit this button ever again. It will just reset all by itself to zero whenever you charge your vehicle or whenever you fill it up with gas. But yes, those are the widgets that you can choose from on this side. Keep in mind, yes, you can go up and down. You can also go left and right and then see more options as well. Moving right along, we're going to break down this portion of the screen here. Now, this one is going to be something to watch out for because it did take me quite a while to figure out how to change the display here. It is quite tricky, but what you need to look for is going to be this little guy right over here. You can barely see a line that is located right over here. And basically, if you swipe from the edge of the screen going to the left, you can see another menu that pops up here. Now, on this side of the screen, depending on whatever you like to see the most, 
you can choose different types of menu options here. So let's break these down. Of course, we do have our navigation. So if you do prefer to keep a wide view of your navigation, this is gonna be a good one to choose from. If I go down, you're gonna see my modes. My modes is basically just gonna be the background image that you see here. And depending on whichever image you have, it is gonna be changing depending on whichever mode you're in. If you are somebody who doesn't change the drive modes a lot, I personally wouldn't recommend this one because you're just gonna be seeing this guy the whole time. But say for example, if I did go into sport mode, you would see the sport display here. Or if I went to eco mode, you would also see the eco background here as well. Probably not one of my favorite ones, but yes, let's keep on going down. If I go over to live vehicle, you're gonna see some pretty cool information that pops up here whenever you begin to drive, such as how the power is being distributed and whatnot. And then the last one we have is media. This one is also gonna be a good one. I know I did say that I would probably keep my media right there. More likely than not, I would probably keep the media display here because media is gonna be something that I switch through every single day. So I do see myself using this one the most. So I do plan on keeping mine on media. If you are somebody who, who listens to the radio a whole lot or a podcast or an audiobook, this one is going to be a good choice for you. So this is going to be my recommendation on what you should choose for this guy or this portion of the screen here. Next up, a major one that you should all know about is going to be this other line that is located right up here. If I swipe down from this, you can see another menu drop down here. Now, this is going to be very, very important for those who do not know what this is because BMW, they used to have their row of icons that, that used to go from one through eight here that you could preset to whichever setting, phone number, or even navigation. And then you can program that to any numerical that you see that you saw right down there. Well, now BMW did bring that back, but they rebranded it and named it Shortcuts. And again, Shortcuts is located right up here. If you just swipe down from this little line right there, you're gonna see Shortcuts here. Now there is a way to program this and you can program a whole lot more than you could before. So let me demonstrate some of the things that you can program. I'm gonna click on these little four squares here. If I do that, it brings us into our main menu where we can see every little icon, every little setting. So any icon that you see here, you could actually save as a shortcut. Now, I don't have my phone fully connected yet, but you would see your Apple CarPlay apps show up here as well. So one of the things you could do is say, for example, if you are someone who uses Google Maps a lot, Ways a lot, or even Spotify, you're gonna see all those icons listed right down here too. So what you could do is whenever you see those apps, all you would have to do is just click and hold, and then once you do that, you're gonna see add to shortcuts here, or even add to gesture shortcuts here. What add to gesture shortcuts is, is if your vehicle has gesture control where you can do those hand signals, you can actually have a shortcut program to be one of those hand signals as well. The options that you would have is, is gonna be these and, and also one of these as well. But yes, if your vehicle does have gesture control, you can actually program that shortcut to be one of these. But for this video demonstration, we're simply just gonna add this to shortcut. Once I do that, you can see that it says vehicle status was added to shortcut. And now if I swipe down from this guy here, you're gonna see vehicle status right down here. And then all you would have to do is click it and then you're gonna go right into the shortcut right there. Super convenient, not only can you use that for any icon that we saw on that main menu, but you can also set this for your favorite radio station, or you could even use it for a navigation address too, and then use the BMW maps to navigate you home. One other trick that I like to do to get into that shortcuts menu is, of course, if we're driving, it's very difficult to reach over and go down like that. So one of the little tips that you could do is with this controller here, all you would have to do is just push up on it, and then you can see your shortcuts menu pop up right there, and then just push down on that, and before you know it, you're gonna go straight to that screen. That makes it much more easy because if you're driving, you do want to prevent yourself from reaching over because that's not really safe. So again, just push up from the bottom and then you're gonna see your shortcuts menu right up here as well. So yes, that was shortcuts. Definitely take advantage of this. It's very, very convenient. I would highly recommend you set up shortcuts. You can set up up to eight different ones. And also before you do, it's highly recommended that you set up your BMW ID because this will save to your BMW ID as well. So definitely make sure you're logged into that and then set up your shortcuts so everything will save to your BMW ID. So yes, those three things were covered and right up here, you're gonna see these little icons here. Many people will question what this one is. You can see that there's a little three here. All that is, is your notifications that your vehicle is trying to notify you about. You don't have to worry about this one too much. If I click on it, you're gonna see that these are the notifications here. You're just gonna see minor, minor things like, oh, somebody forgot to put on their seatbelt. But these notifications will go away all by themselves, so don't worry about that too much. Again, that was this little three guy here. 
Again, right here, you're gonna see whatever is playing on the radio. You're gonna see the status of the volume. You're gonna see your voice command here. You're gonna see your BMW ID to see whoever's logged in. And of course, you have your time. Another major change that took place in BMW's iDrive 8.5 update was gonna be this little row of icons here. So with this little row of icons, these icons that you see here used to be on this left side of the screen, but now they made it more simplified and I personally like this new design because it's much more easy to access and this bar will just stay the same no matter whichever screen that you're in. So let's break this down from left to right. First off and foremost, this musical note here is gonna be our media. If I go into that, you're gonna see everything that is related to media. If you're not seeing your things like satellite radio or AM radio, if your vehicle has it, or even your app, your Apple CarPlay music, what you need to do is click, is change your audio source. So if you go into this, you can see that it will bring up your different audio sources. Right now, the only thing we have connected is our Sirius XM and FM radio, but if my phone was connected to Apple CarPlay, you would also see that here too. So yes, you can. this is how you can cycle through your satellite radio or things like your FM radio. Moving on to the next one, we have our navigation. If I go into that, it brings up our BMW Maps. BMW Maps is pretty convenient for short drives. I personally still like to use Waze and Google Maps for the most part. One of the biggest benefits of using the BMW Maps is that it is very, very intuitive with the vehicle that might have a head-up display. So this BMW does have a head-up display. So if I were to use the BMW Maps, it would be very, very intuitive in showing me all the different lines and lanes that would show up on my glass right up here. It also does a really good job of displaying additional route previews here as well. So yes, BMW Maps does have some perks to it. It does do a pretty decent job of getting you there on time using the most efficient route. But personally speaking, I do still love my Google Maps and I do still love my ways. Next up, we have our climate control. Now there has been some major changes done with the climate control. One of the biggest complaints that BMW owners have with the new system is that the lack of climate control buttons has been a major issue because they made it very very difficult for people who like to have manual control over their climate control they did do a much better job on this because they did basically incorporate a digital version of those same buttons that we used to see before so of course we do have our on and off switch here which is much more convenient than what it was before and then we also have our fan speed here which you can go up you can go down we have our air circulation right up here AC is right up here. If you do keep your climb control in automatic at all times, you can leave your AC on at all times. The vehicle will just control it all by itself. Auto is my recommendation on how you should keep your climate control. If you leave it on auto, all you would have to do is just adjust your temperature and then the vehicle will just simply take care of the rest. If you do like to have manual control on your climate control, simply turn this off and then you're gonna see a whole nother menu screen show up here, which looks like a giant spaceship. So this screen you'll see if you take over manual control on your climate control. People who don't like the automatic mode, all you have to do is just adjust the fan speed here and then this guy right up here where we see these lines going around you can choose where you want the air to blow from so you can have it on the top on your upper body you can have it on your lower body and then if you click up here you can also have it set so that it blows from from the top portion of the vehicle as well this is a little bit difficult and confusing to, to use at first but i do see what they are trying to do so yes if you are somebody who likes to keep manual control this is going to be a good place to be at but again my recommendation just leave it on auto just sit back relax and just adjust the temperature just like you would your house and then the vehicle will take care of the rest max ac is great to use for those hot summer days max ac will simply reduce the temperature all the way down and then it'll increase the fan speed all the way up to quickly cool down the car as quick as possible sync i personally like to keep my temperatures in sync so what sync does just keeping these two temperatures in sync the whole time so if i have sync on and if I move my temperature, you can see that the one on the right will also move temperature as well. But say for example, if my wife got into the car and then she wanted her own degrees, if she goes over here and changes her temperature, it will discontinue sync being on. So keep that in mind. You do have to hit sync every single time somebody messes with this guy here. Fan speed for the passenger side, they also have their own control here as well. That is gonna be a quick rundown of our climate control. Again, many different changes here, so definitely play around with this. And if you did have any questions on this, write those down below. And lastly, one of the biggest changes that I absolutely love about the climate control is gonna be this little guy here. So before in iDrive 8, they used to have these circular dials and those circular dials would also have your heated steering wheel, your heated seats, and even your cooling seats. Well now, pay attention to this one because your heated seats or heated steering wheel is gonna be in this little guy right over here. If 
I click on that, you're gonna see these three little boxes pop up. The one we have right here is gonna be for our ventilator seat, which is the one on the left. Our heater seat is gonna be this guy here. And our heater steering wheel is gonna be this guy here. All you have to do is simply just click on it and then you can adjust the setting for that. If you want it off, just hold it down and then it will turn off. But yes, now all we have to do is just click on this little guy and then that brings up our heated seats, heated steering wheel, and ventilated seats if your vehicle has it. The best part about this is that you could be in any menu at all, and then you and then you would still have the option right here to simply adjust your heated seats or heated steering wheel, and that makes it much more convenient because then you don't have to go into the climate menu and, and then do it from there. You simply just have to click on this, and then you have those three icons there. Very, very easy. Next up, we have these little four little boxes here, which brings up our main menu. So our main menu is gonna be where we would go to make adjustments to our vehicle in terms of settings. This hasn't changed too, too much compared to the last iDrive 8, but one of the biggest ways or biggest convenient ways to use this is take advantage of this browse menu that you see here. If I click on this, say for example, if I wanted to get to the head-up display to make adjustments to that, all I would have to do is just type in head up display or even just head and then you can see head up display pop up right over here on the right side and then just click on that and then before you know it your settings for head up display are all right here you don't have to go searching through every little box you don't have to go searching through sub menus anything you're looking for just type it into the search box here and then it'll make your life much more easy. If you did want to know what all these icons do in depth, we did have a separate video of that. So definitely check out this video that you see here. It is on the channel and we break down every little one of these. So if you did want more details on that, check that one out. In terms of changes here, not too much has changed. Of course, all these icons here are going to be our BMW settings. If you did have your phone connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're going to see those settings pop up here as well. And if you wanted to organize those, you can see these icons here. All apps would show all those apps, your BMW apps, and along with your Apple CarPlay apps. Infotainment apps would simply just show your infotainment apps. And then lastly, your vehicle apps are gonna be things like your vehicle settings. If you wanted to go in here to change your lighting or make adjustments to any other setting within the vehicle. But again, the best way to use this guy is simply just search for whatever you're looking for and that is gonna be through this guy here. Lastly, we have our phone icon here. This is where you're gonna to go to connect a phone or make phone adjustments. Again, my phone's not connected, but if you did have multiple phones connected to the vehicle, you would see all those there. One of the biggest things to mention is if you do have multiple phones connected to your vehicle, you're gonna see another option to go into settings. If you go into the settings, you can see this screen pop up here where you can prioritize whichever phone you want to be the primary phone connected. So say for example, if multiple phones that are, that are known by the vehicle both got in at the same time, you can set one of them to be the main phone and then have that one connected as the primary phone as soon as both phones get into the vehicle. Take advantage of that one so you don't fight with your wife on whoever's phone should be connected. So yes, that is gonna be our quick overview of the new iDrive 8.5. Again, iDrive 8.5 is gonna be available for late 2023 vehicles as an upgrade. And all the newer BMWs that are rolling out now are also gonna be coming with the iDrive 8.5 as well. Again, they made some pretty good changes. If you did all have any questions on the new iDrive system or wanted to go more in depth with it, comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Again, don't forget to check out the Amazon link right down below. There are some pretty cool accessories that you all have to check out and get for your BMW as well. The link for that, again, is gonna be right down below. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one.